crypto and the raison d'etre, the thing that was really going to help was for countries that didn't have a stable currency of their own, or certainly it was very hard to transact internationally with it. Is this something you still see or hear from, the likes of Venezuela, the likes of Argentina, that cryptocurrencies could be an answer in whatever form, whether it be Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency or indeed store of store of value we want to talk Interesting about. Interesting. We, we saw some stores with signs that said Bitcoin accepted, <laughs> but it doesn't seem to be widely adopted. Uh, People don't seem to be looking at it as the solution to their problems. I don't think anything is going to save Venezuela at this point. But Argentina, you make a good point where the people don't know necessarily what the value of the currency has been because it's been so volatile. But Bitcoin has and, uh, been nothing if not volatile. I, I, so I, I, is I the would, answer there I would yet? say that that has more to do with just the evolution of the ecosystem, right? Uh, I think in terms of where we are from an infrastructure standpoint, we can't really get Bitcoin into the hands of people that need it the most just yet. That's slowly changing. No, no, yeah, keep going. No, I was going to ask about, uh, on a slightly related question, about uh, cr different currency correlations. Because when I look on the terminal, we have CRYP Go, or you can sort of pull them up. And usually they're all red on a day, yes. or they're all green on a day. There's very little discrimination. Either it's a bullish day for crypto or a bad day. At what point do you think there will be a time where some are doing well, and some are doing badly, and some will actually have a view? Because right now it seems like, they either all go down or all up at the same time. Yeah, I mean, the answer is, uh, honestly, I don't know. I, I think, I think we're, we've think we been looking for that decoupling since the beginning of the year. Um, I it's think surprising, isn't it, that there isn't more sort of discrimination it, among traders between yeah, yes, good and yes bad Yes and projects? no. I, I think what you'll more likely see is a long-term decoupling. Mm -hmm. We saw this in the last bull run, where if you looked at the top 10, 15, 20 assets from the 2013 run-up, almost all of them are gone, right? Uh, so, so these things do decouple over time. I would argue they might have to decouple during a bear market, not when people are fearful, mm. but when they're just apathetic. And the only people that are actually using these assets are the power users, the ones building applications that are looking for true utility, it, it, things it, that technically work. Isn't that part of the problem for widespread adoption we were just talking about is that uh, as long as you don't know what to invest in and it's hard to get into, people are going to look at it and say, I'm going to stay away from this. And so widespread adoption becomes a matter of self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to talk our own book too much, but <laughs> the entire company that we've built, Masari, is, is, is structured to answer this question. How do you help people become more knowledgeable about these assets and actually look at their fundamentals beyond just the price movements that you'd see on CoinMarket? Well, I think that's getting to defining exactly what they are. Last year, they were highly speculative cryptographic assets. Now we're getting to points where Bitcoin is really digital gold. When you're in Argentina and you can leave the country with some of your value on a thumb drive versus gold shoving in your pockets, that's to me just an advancement of technology. And it's happening with Bitcoin. Now, some of the other currencies, well, cryptos that are called currencies, they're really not. They're still speculative digital assets. To get the currencies, they have to be more like Tether or Litecoin, where they can actually transact with very little volatility. I think we're getting there, but we're still, that's my point, is we, gotta, we still have much further way to go in terms of volatility and stability. Ryan, you make a really interesting point. You say, talk so they are completely correct. It's really hard right now to really define the value of cryptos. And as a crypto investor, if this interview is not making sense, I think the best thing you can do is kind of wait and see what develops. But the whole use case for crypto has changed, especially for Bitcoin. I mean, the real only use case value I see for now, and like this is something that may not happen right now in this market, because as you can look, we're in a crypto bear market, is a store of value instead of having to haul gold or jewelry around, um, you can put into your cell phone and store large sums of money but once again the infrastructure has to get built out there has to be a lot more stability and as of now if i was going to do that i would be holding a, st a, a stable coin that's tied to like the u.s dollar like tether or the gemini dollar that just seems more it wouldn't it would make more sense but let me know your thoughts on this and i will talk to you soon